We are happy to welcome Frank Edgeley from London here today. She's a visual artist and designer and part of Assembly Studio, a multidisciplinary collective working across architecture, design and art. For their urban regeneration project, Granby 4th Street in Liverpool, they won the Turner Prize in 2015 as the first non-artists. Welcome, Fran Edgeley. Hi. Um, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me here today. Um, yeah, it's really wonderful to be in Berlin. Um, yeah, so uh, this is us. Um, Assemble, we're a group of um, 15 um, individuals who have different kinds of backgrounds. I guess most people have an architectural, um, some element of architectural education. Um, nobody is yet qualified, but people are in the process of doing that. Everyone kind of has an interest in learning through doing. Um, we have no hierarchy, so everyone who is a partner is also a kind of... Um, project manager, administrator, um, sometimes construction worker. Um, and we've kind of developed the organization to try and provide opportunities for as many um, people to have input into projects as possible um, in an environment and an economic system and a kind of industry which doesn't necessarily support that kind of work. So it's kind of an ongoing um, struggle. Um, I guess, actually, I want to say one thing. We're really interested in, in the citizens of, of a city having a kind of active role in engaging with how their environment um, is built and can change around them. And so we've done that, tried to explore that ideas through our own practice, but also trying to extend that kind of opportunity to others um, and have developed a really kind of hands-on practice, which is interested in fabrication and experimentation of materials and... Um, and that kind of is expressed in a range of different ways at different scales. So for the largest project in the office, um, we're working on a new gallery space for Goldsmiths University, and that has kind of um, led to the development and prototyping and also us becoming the kind of suppliers for the cladding system on the building and also the production of furniture and different um, elements in the kind of interior fit-out. Um, we've started a kind of construction company, which is in the kind of subsidiary. We now we seem to be making new companies like every year to try and um, continue the work that we want to do. So one is a construction company, so that enables us to kind of formalise our involvement in in the delivery of projects that we're designing, and so we can have more control over how the designs are realised. So this is kind of a housing project, and also it's done kind of temporary theatres. Um, we're interested in, in, in being involved in projects uh, that are designed not only in the kind of material and physical aspects, but also in the kind of culture that they provide for and the activities that they support. So this is Black Horse Workshop, which is a, a kind of open access workshop space. Um, and we've kind of been involved in business planning, have an ongoing place on the board and involved in like its kind of incremental growth over the years. Um, and we've started doing kind of self-initiated developments as like um, workspace provider. Um, and we also do a lot of kind of hands-on um, open access construction workshops. Um, and the reason I wanted to kind of give a little bit of a context is, um, to our practice and the kind of range of activities that we do to try and explain or give some sense of the way in which we've approached and occupied this this particular project uh, over the past six years. So this is, um, I'm going to talk about a kind of neighbourhood regeneration project, um, which we have been involved in in Granby in, in uh, South Liverpool, in Toxteth, um, which has included the kind of um, reoccupation of a number of houses, um, and uh, like affordable houses for rent and for sale, the start of kind of social enterprise. So this is um, Grammy Workshop, which is a um, architectural ceramics manufacturer, um, kind of does a lot of experimentation and is 
basically an opportunity to provide employment in the neighbourhood and also like kind of infrastructure and resources for different kinds of businesses and education and um, creative practitioners in the area as well. Um, and then also kind of um, free accessible social community spaces um, that, well, a space, um, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail later on. Um, so it's really been a kind of quite um, incremental uh, process. Um, a lot of kind of um, different projects operating at a small scale that are interconnected and therefore give kind of credence and weight and power to each other um, and can involve a lot of different um, stakeholders and people with different agendas. Um, and so the kind of evolution of, of, of this kind of um, regeneration, if that's the best word, I'm not sure, um, has feels like incredibly rich because there hasn't ever really been one single vision for for the neighborhood it's just kind of evolved over time and is responsive and involves housing associations and co-ops and private individuals and us and the community land trust who we've been working with um very closely um so granby has a has a really interesting and and um complicated history it was uh, the neighborhood was kind of built as um, terraces at the turn the end of the 19th century to house kind of merchants when Liverpool was at the center of kind of British trading empire um, and as the city went into decline it became the location for one of the oldest black communities in Europe and then subsequently kind of um, suffered from like chronic disinvestment by the state and became a place where um, there was essentially um, like government, uh, well, um, yeah, like racial discrimination in terms of housing allocation and pe where people were put in different locations in the city and, and this was one of them. And so there was, um, it's probably perhaps most famous, particularly in the UK for um, being the kind of cent central starting point of um, the uprisings in 81, which were against bl police brutality and lack of economic opportunity um, and and since then basically has kind of um, been subject to a series of, of kind of successive regeneration schemes that have sought to try and fix Granby from the top down. So um, some of them involve motorways, some of them involve um, market renewal initiatives um, and what essentially has happened is that the whole um, neighborhood became emptied. Um, a lot of the properties were compulsory purchase ordered and people um, were kind of moved out and, and dispersed and problems and kind of people were, were kind of displaced and moved on. Um, but there was kind of like a hardcore group of residents who stuck out um, ownership in some of the streets and they fought for the protection of this particular part of Granby before it was demolished because um, they saw a value in, in the architecture and the kind of like symbolic value, uh, kind of importance and in the community that, that um, those in power um, didn't, did not see. Um, so they started to take things into their own hands, um, taking action in the streets, trying to like um, where the state had decided that this area was eventually going to be knocked down, they actually had, there was, there was lack, a real lack of public services, so there was no kind of cleaning of the streets, there was no collection of bins, um, and at one point no policing, but it meant that people were really able to take control um, of the streets and kind of extend the kind of level of care that they had, that they saw in their own properties out into this kind of public space and extend into um, into these streets. So that took the form of sometimes painting, a lot of gardening, um, starting a market to replace the kind of main high street which had been demolished, and also forming a community land trust, which is a legal structure that came out of the civil rights movement in, in America and Georgia, um, which enables a group of individuals to come together and to take ownership of land and property. And they really wanted to try and formalize this level of control that they had over the you know, kind of emotional, um, atmospheric control that they had over the streets um, in, in some kind of legal form so that they weren't going to be kind of pushed around. 
um, in the future. So we uh, kind of have worked with them over yeah, this period of time in a kind of variety of different roles. So sometimes we're, it's like a client and professional relationship. Sometimes we're kind of entrepreneurs working to start social enterprise. Sometimes we're co-authoring projects with them. Sometimes we're also investing small amounts of um, like t time and kind in order to help kind of kickstart um, particular elements of, of the project. Um, so it's really changed um, over over, the, yeah, over the course of working there. Um, and I think what's been really powerful about the way that we've been working with them is that it has been entirely based on the kind of value of live, their lived experience and really listening to them. So trying to, so at the beginning when we were, when they asked us to kind of design um, the houses that they had taken, they, they secured 10 houses from the council, um, which had been tinned up and they, asked us to be the designers working with them to kind of bring those back to life. Um, so we spent a lot of time going into those residence houses who'd been living there for the past few decades um, and trying to kind of document and detail um, the kind of spatial changes that they'd made to the, the, the built fabric of the houses. And then looking at the kind of varied um, condition of the houses which they'd got, con they'd got ownership of, and you know, and they were like in quite quite varied but quite extreme um, levels of dereliction. Um, and then trying to take those two kind of structural assessments and like learnt observations and kind of marry them together in a kind of matrix that made most economic sense. So it wasn't just a kind of bland, repetitive, copy and paste approach to a housing unit. Which you know, these are terraces, so they are they were built um, originally. Um, to be identical, but trying to not undertake a process which is about refurbishment, not straightforwardly, but trying to be responsive and opportunistic. So it's more about repair and adaptation. Um, so we have we developed the houses as kind of a series of um, quite simple spatial moves and like very cheap finishes. And um, these are affordable housing, so it. Uh, they're kind of long, low-term, um, long-term, low rents, um, and also some of which were for sale, um, which have included a, a kind of covenant um, in the contract, which means that the that it's trying to prevent kind of housing the speculation of um, property market in this area. Um, so it's tied to the kind of average wage in Liverpool rather than the kind of market rates in the neighbourhoods. Um, and so, in terms of the design, it was really trying to use this condition, quite extreme condition of the houses when we found them, um, to our advantage in terms of like rather than you know putting in a sus suspended ceiling again, trying to you know, in this instance, um, having a kind of a taller space, and to take that idea also to not just the scale of a room about being opportunistic, um, but using that on on the scale of a building as well. So two of the properties which they had got ownership of were in such poor state, it didn't, the amount of work to get it back them back into the residential properties was, was not, didn't make economic um, sense. So I've just lost my timing, so I'm just gonna carry on speaking and see how it goes. Um, yeah, so this is the Winter Garden project, which is basically these two properties next door to each other, which essentially, due to water ingress through the roof, had just become these kind of masonry shells. Um, and it felt, and it was an idea that we had come out of conversations with the residents that was this kind of like dream project that maybe one day we could have this space which would support those activities which had been so transformative to the area. So that was like direct kind of creative action and also gardening. These are kind of two fundamental. Um, drivers to what had saved um, the streets. Um, so the proposal as a, as a place and a kind of set of infrastructures to support those activities was um, this kind of winter garden. So it includes both a kind of community garden and growing space, a meeting room on, so that's on the right. Um, and then on the left in here, which you can't really see, um, is a meeting room on the ground floor and then a kind of studio flat on the top. 
Um, with the idea being that that can then generate revenue and that it doesn't become a financial burden on the community where there is very low income um, rates in general. Um, so these are the two properties and the kind of model that we made, um, which we do a lot of large-scale model buildings. We find it's a really useful tool in terms of like having people who won't necessarily engage with certain aspects of architectural practice to have a conversation and give feedback. And um, So this has been kind of like on the street, moving between people's houses and coming out in the market, um, and it's, it's really helpful. Um, kind of way of practicing. This is, yeah, so this is kind of just basic visualizations. And the idea being that it is left essentially as a kind of reminder of this process that the whole neighborhood has been through. So it's not trying to cover up um, the, the kind of decay that has happened, but is trying to make something which becomes a kind of reflective space and a space for people to network and grassroots organization to happen. Um, so this is on site, this is last week. Um, it's still very much a live project. Trees using the, you can see here actually, this is really nice. This area is like where the coal storage used to be for the house and it's becoming the kind of uh, root ball pit for the tree. So it's gonna be like a tree going up in the central space. Anyway, we're really excited about this. Um, be opening if everything goes to plan by the end of the year. So you're very welcome to come visit. Um, and really what's important actually to just, I wanted to finish on was that it is through this kind of interconnected mutual exchange between projects that makes this whole experience way for us and also for the residents and hopefully for future um, members of the neighborhood. So um, powerful is, is the fact that, so this, the Winter Garden is also acting as an opportunity to prototype new products for Grammy Workshop and then it will become a kind of show space for them and there's going to be an artist residency program run out of the Winter Garden um, studio flat which then they'll also be able to use the facilities at the workshop so it's kind of everything is um, trying to be opportunistic in terms of the space that are forwarded without trying to just um, give up on the architectural heritage of what's existed before. Um, so I think it's, it has been really successful. It's, it is challenging both for, well, it's just a really challenging situation to continue to um, push for community-led projects because it's, it requires a lot of time and effort and volunteering from those who live there. And I think it is it's largely fallen on kind of um, a collection of older women who've been there for a um, really long time, just putting so much... Um, work into it for free and I think it, I don't know whether that, that's an ideal situation in terms of like saying this is the way things should be happening um, the political climate in the UK at the moment means that there isn't really a will to be thinking particularly creative, creatively about how community led regeneration can happen there's a lot of financial pressure on um, on, on local authorities, and so they're generally kind of going for easier and safe options where they feel like they can trust in the kind of um, financing and low risk of things. And I think that actually, critically, it is actually the financial culture, in, at least in the UK, that needs to shift in terms of like what people understand is a good return on their investment and the rate at which they expect that to happen. Um, but it feels like lots of things are happening. Um, so we're kind of at the beginning of hopefully a better chapter um, in housing for the UK. But yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you.